Bullseye. Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be building a desktop siege weapon that you can make with some very low cost and common supplies. The desktop catapult that we're going to build only takes a few rubber bands, eight popsicle sticks, a binder clip, and a box of Tic Tacs. To start off, let's grab the binder clip, two of our popsicle sticks, and two rubber bands. We need to attach our first popsicle stick to one of the arms on our binder clip. We want it to fit between the swinging arm and the rest of the clip. With that in place, stretch the rubber band over, twist it, and wrap it around. We'll just do this over and over until our rubber band is securely holding our popsicle stick in place. If it's too hard to stretch it over the top of the popsicle stick because you're running out of rubber band, try stretching it over the clip. It's shorter and easier. There we go, that seems pretty well attached. It does have a little bit of flexibility and play in it, but that shouldn't cause a problem. Now we want to attach our second popsicle stick onto our first popsicle stick. Our first popsicle stick is attached to one side of the metal clip, and we want to attach our second popsicle stick going that same direction in front of the other popsicle stick. That way we have sort of a tiered effect. Clip, first popsicle stick, second popsicle stick. We don't want to attach it so it goes down and then back up. We want it to be constantly moving down a step. Let's overlap our popsicle sticks by about one inch and then use our second rubber band to secure those together. We have the rubber band wrapped around the bottom of the second stick, leaving a little bit of an overlap without rubber bands wrapped around it. That will come into play later. Now let's set this piece aside and grab our box of Tic Tacs. Get an empty container and empty all of the candy out into it. Even if you don't want to eat it, we have a use for it. Our next step is to completely remove the white lid from the rest of the container. You may find it easier to remove if you take a small knife and slice through the sticker that's holding it on. Now that we have the top removed, we also want to remove this latch portion from the lid. You could probably get it off by just bending it back and forth and twisting a lot, but I'm going to use the knife again to just slit underneath the hinge. Now let's grab two more popsicle sticks and two more rubber bands. We want to secure these popsicle sticks to the side of our candy container with a little bit of extra space on either end. Using the same process as before, take the rubber band, wrap it around. Once again, grab two more popsicle sticks and two more rubber bands. These two popsicle sticks will attach to the sticks already connected to our Tic Tac container at an angle about like this. By wrapping the rubber band tightly around them, it should hold them right in place. To try and get the angle to stay open instead of just having the popsicle stick swing closed, it can also help if you make sure to wrap the rubber band around the popsicle sticks along the top and bottom. You can see that the popsicle stick is now being held at a nice angle, and while it does have flexibility and movement, it is being held in the right spot. That's one attached, do the same thing for the other side. There we go, we've got both of these arms pretty well attached. This time we now need two more sticks and four more rubber bands. So down in this corner, we want the ends of the popsicle sticks to meet, but up here, we want the end of one stick to meet lower down on the middle of the other. At this point, since we are closing off this triangle, we won't be able to wrap rubber bands that go around the top and bottom portions of where we're linking, but because the other two points are already holding it, even if we just have it secured in one direction, it should have a stable angle. There's one side, now we need to attach the stick on the other side in the same way. At this point, you can see the shape that our base is taking. We now have two pieces. We have a base and we have the swinging arm of our catapult, and it's time to put them together. Stretch the binder clip wide enough apart that it can fit all the way over the bottom of our Tic Tac case. Make sure you use the bottom of the case and not the top, as the top will be too squishy to hold it on. Don't worry if the mouth is starting to collapse a little bit, it shouldn't affect the functionality. Let's be sure to have the swinging arm all the way down so it's lying across the body of the Tic Tac container. We don't want to have it facing this direction or we won't be able to use our catapult. We now want to take the lid of our Tic Tac container and another rubber band and secure that in between the upright posts of the popsicle sticks. You can now get the general idea of how this catapult is going to work. 
So there's two more steps that we need to take. One is to add a little spot where we can put our ammunition up on the top, and the second is to give it some spring because at this point, nothing is making it fire. The small top tab that we pulled off of the lid from our Tic Tac container will work very well for holding our ammunition. And now we need to take one final rubber band to give our catapult some launch power. This rubber band will fit in the gap between the two sticks we connected together earlier. Now let's place this rubber band over the top of our Tic Tac container and use one final rubber band to hold it in place so it doesn't come off when our catapult launches. And with that, our catapult is complete and ready for testing. For ammunition, of course, I suggest some Tic Tacs. This little catapult made from popsicle sticks, a tic-tac box, a binder clip, and some rubber bands works really well, but I want to try upgrading it to make it a little more durable and a little classier looking. So we're going to build one more, again using eight popsicle sticks, a binder clip, and a tic-tac box, but we've got some hardware this time that should hold it together in a more permanent fashion. We've got six machine screws and the nuts that fit onto them, as well as two little shelf pins that we'll use to secure all of the pieces together. We'll also probably try staining the popsicle sticks just to make it look like it's a nicer quality of wood. I'll also use a little bit of tape in some spots, partly for decoration and partly for structural support. All of the popsicle sticks will be held together either by the machine screws or by these little pins, which means most of our popsicle sticks need to have holes drilled into them. Let's measure and drill all of those holes and then start assembling. We can use the connecting points on our first catapult as a measuring guide for the sticks on the second one. At this point and this point, we'll use the machine screws to hook it together. Here on the back, however, we're going to use the shelf support as a removable pin. That means near the front of this bottom piece, we need a small hole drilled for the machine screws, and near the back we'll need a larger hole for the shelf supports. For this popsicle stick, we'll need a large hole down at the bottom and a small hole at the top. And finally, for the third support, we'll need three small holes, one down at the bottom, one for the second support, and a third one will attach the lid of our Tic Tac container. Now let's copy those three sticks onto three more for the other side of the catapult. We'll start by taking a drill bit that's the same size as our machine screw and drilling all of the small holes. A quick note, if you're drilling holes into popsicle sticks, you want to use extremely light pressure as you go through because they can split very easily. Pressing down hard on the drill, that's what will happen. We'll also need two of the small holes drilled into the lid of our Tic Tac box, so let's take off the top, empty it out, and drill those holes. Now let's switch for a larger drill bit to drill out the larger holes for the shelf support pegs. We now have six popsicle sticks that have holes drilled into them and two that do not have any holes which will become our swinging arm. Now before we start assembly, we want to stain all of these popsicle sticks so they look like a nicer quality of wood. And before we stain them, let's just hit them really quick with some high grit sandpaper to smooth them out. Now with all of our popsicle sticks stained in a nice darker wooden color, let's start attaching the swing arm to the binder clip the same way we did before, except this time we'll use duct tape to attach it rather than rubber bands. We'll also use a small portion of tape to attach the top tab onto our swing arm. And finally, we'll use some tape to attach the two bottom supports to our Tic Tac container.
With that taping done, we can now start using our hardware to assemble everything. We have machine screws and nuts connecting these two joints, and now we'll use our shelf support pins to connect these two at the bottom. Now before we attach our lid into this support on top, we need to make sure that our swing arm is already attached because otherwise we won't be able to move it past there and our catapult won't work. Fit our binder clip onto the bottom of the Tic Tac container, swing the arm across. Now we use the last two machine screws and nuts to secure this in place. We're going to use a rubber band to power our catapult the same way we did before. We'll use a single strip of tape going around the lid of our Tic Tac container to hold the rubber band in place. With that, this catapult is almost complete, but there's one more little modification that I want to make. These pins attached to the bottom are there because we can now remove them and have the whole catapult collapse down to a smaller size. This can make our catapult a little bit easier to store. Of course, we want to make sure that we don't lose track of these pins, and it would be nice to have a way to carry around some ammo. So using just a few strips of tape, let's make a cover that goes over the opening of our Tic Tac box that can hold both these pieces and some ammunition inside. I'll make it so it attaches to the bottom, has a non-sticky portion in the middle, and then a small tab at the top where it will attach again. a little bit of ammo storage, and a place where we can put our hardware. Beautiful, fires off like a dream. Two different ways to build a desktop catapult using popsicle sticks, a tic tac container, a binder clip, and either some rubber bands or some machine screws. These are both very fun to build, they don't take very long, and before you know it, you can be shooting tic tacs at your coworkers. All right, you probably should never shoot these at people. They could hit someone in the eye or just hurt, and you don't want to do that. Maybe you can find a softer ammunition that you wouldn't have to worry about whether or not it's going to hit anyone. But these are a lot of fun. They've got a great range. They can shoot about 40 feet, which is pretty impressive for a little tic tac. If you end up building either of these catapults, take a picture and tag us on Instagram, hashtag the king of random. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, just hit the bomb to join the club. If you missed our last video or want to watch it again, just click up here at the top. Click down there if you want to see what the internet thinks that you should watch next. That's it for now. Have fun, be safe, and see you tomorrow.